Hello everyone, welcome to evening prayer at St Matthew's for Monday the 4th of May. Um, I gather that uh, all through last week Vicky has been including a video um, as part of the uh, evening prayer. I'm afraid you're getting the low tech version for me today so I'm sorry about that but I'm sure Vicky will be back tomorrow um, and there'll be a video included. Um, I've just come back from a lovely walk walking the dog going up to Little Britain Lake. Um, one of the things that is really good about evening prayer is to take time as you come towards the end of the day just to get, look back and give thanks for what's been good about the day. And um, so I was just thinking about the beauty of this time of year. So it's been a lovely sunny afternoon. Um, the trees are in their lovely light green you get in spring. Um, and we are going up to Little Britain Lake and there was a a flock of geese with their goslings and it's all just very beautiful and uh, so it's good to give thanks to God for those things and also because of course there's so much more less traffic around at the moment normally you hear the M25 you couldn't hear the M25 so it's a lovely sort of rural feel to being being up at Little Britain today so as I say good to give thanks to God for good things at this time of year and at the end of the day as well as praying for the things, commending the things to God that are not good, um, that we want God to be with us in and for God to change. So um, let's hold on to that and let's come to all of that when we come to our time of prayer in a little while. So uh, on the evening prayer for Easter season, daily prayer book page 269 or on the prayer app, um, but we're going to be saying Psalm 1, Psalm 114 and then Deuteronomy chapter 9 and Ephesians chapter 4. So we begin on page 269 and let's just take a few moments just to still our hearts and commend ourselves to God as we come into his presence. O oh God make speed to save us, O oh Lord make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise forever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. Through him, dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory, and our lips repeat the endless song. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. So we're going to turn to our psalm, which, as I say, is Psalm 114 on page 822. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of a strange tongue, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea saw that and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams, the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you were driven back? You mountains, that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob who turns the hard rock into a pool of water, the flint stone into a springing well. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. 
Let us pray. Strike the rock of our hard hearts, O God, and let our tears of joy and sorrow mould us to bear the imprint of your love given in Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. So we turn to our Old Testament reading, which is from Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 1 to 21. If you're following in the church Bibles, it's on page 172, page 172. Deuteronomy 9, 1 to 21. Hear, O Israel, you are about to cross the Jordan today to go in and dispossess nations larger and mightier than you. Great cities fortified to the heavens, a strong and tall people, the offspring of the Anakim whom you know. You have heard it said of them, who can stand up to the Anakim? Know then today that the Lord your God is the one who crosses over before you as a devouring fire. He will defeat them and subdue them before you so that you may dispossess and destroy them quickly as the Lord has promised you. When the Lord your God thrusts them out before you, do not say to yourself, it is because of my righteousness that the Lord has brought me in to occupy this land. It is rather because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is dispossessing them before you. It is not because of your righteousness or the uprightness of your heart that you are going in to occupy their land, but because of the wickedness of those nations that the Lord your God is dispossessing them before you in order to fulfill the promise that the Lord made on oath to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. Know then that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land to occupy because of your righteousness, for you are a stubborn people. Remember and do not forget how you provoke the Lord your God to wrath in the wilderness. You have been rebellious against the Lord from the day you came out of the land of Egypt until you came to this place. Even at Horeb you provoked the Lord to wrath, and the Lord was so angry with you that he was ready to destroy you. When I went up the mountain to receive the stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant that the Lord made with you, I remained on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. I neither ate bread nor drank water. And the Lord gave me the two stone tablets written with the finger of God. On them were all the words that the Lord had spoken to you at the mountain out of the fire on the day of the assembly. At the end of 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord gave me the two stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant. Then the Lord said to me, get up, go down quickly from here, for your people whom you have brought from Egypt have act, acted corruptly. They have been quick to turn from the way that I commanded them. They have cast an image for themselves. Furthermore, the Lord said to me, I have seen that this people is indeed a stubborn people. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven. And I will make of you a nation mightier and more numerous than they. So I turned and went down from the mountain while the mountain was ablaze. The two tablets of the covenant were in my two hands. Then I saw that you had indeed sinned against the Lord your God by casting for yourselves an image of a calf. You have been quick to turn from the way that the Lord had commanded you. So I took hold of the two tablets and flung them from my two hands, smashing them before your eyes. Then I lay prostrate before the Lord as before, for forty days and forty nights. I neither ate bread nor drank water because of all the sin you had committed, provoking the Lord by doing what was evil in his sight. For I was afraid that the anger that the Lord bore against you was so fierce that he would destroy you. But the Lord listened to me that time also. The Lord was so angry with Aaron that he was ready to destroy him. But I interceded also on behalf of Aaron at the same time. Then I took the sinful thing you had made, the calf, and burned it with fire and crushed it, grinding it thoroughly until it was reduced to dust. And I threw the dust of it into the stream that runs down the mountain.
And then here's our New Testament reading, which is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 16, on page 191. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making, make, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you are called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gift to his, his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. So may we be people who um, in this time of challenge, in this time of testing, might be people who grow up in our faith, who grow as disciples of Jesus, as we are called to do and as we use the gifts that we've give, been given by God's grace. So let's turn back to our evening prayer. Page 272. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. And we say together the Magnificat. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. 
So let's turn then to a time of prayer. And as I said at the beginning, let's just take some time at the beginning to look back over this day. I think what are the things that I can give thanks to God for? What's been good? What's been positive? What have been signs of God's life and God's love? So let's uh, offer those things to God to begin with. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that so many things that we have experienced today are signs of your grace, of your love, of your life. Thank you for the good weather. Thank you for the new growth on the trees. Thank you for the new animals that are being born. Thank you for new life. That reflects the new life we have in Jesus. Help us in the midst of all the difficulties that we face at the moment to see your goodness, to give you thanks, to use those things as signs of hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, thinking about that reading from Ephesians, that we might recognise the gifts that God has given us and have the opportunity to use them in these times. Father, we pray for ourselves. We thank you for the gifts that we have in Christ as members of his body. Help us, Lord, to know what it means to be the body of Christ, serving the world at this time and show each of us what our part is in it. And Lord, as we go through this time of testing, we pray that you would strengthen us, you would help us to grow, help us to deepen our faith in you, help us to become more mature as your disciples, serving the world in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then let's, let, let's pray for those who are in need. Pray for those who are ill at this time, especially those with COVID-19. Pray for those who are in hospital. Those who are desperately ill. For those who are dying. For the bereaved. Pray for those who are lonely because they are having to isolate at this time. For those struggling to see the signs of hope. Father, we commend all these people and situations to you. We pray that you will be with each of us in the challenges of life at this moment and that you would bring healing in our nation and to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The collect prayer for the Easter season. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. So I uh, hope that you'll have a really good and positive evening.
Uh, tomorrow, Vic is going to be leading us in morning and evening prayer, and I'll be back on Wednesday. So may God bless you and those you love, and may you keep safe. Have a good evening.